Hey friends, it is warming up in here, isn't it? I tell you what, we're going to talk about the thermal coefficient of expansion today. Yes, you can have linear growth. You can have delta, axial elongation, just like we've been talking about. But this time, instead of from force, we're going to have axial elongation from a change in temperature. So as the material heats up, the little molecules inside there start moving around. Hey, 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 get away from me. Hey, get away, get away. Right? And they start spreading apart. And that what happens is that material grows. And so engineers, long before me or you, have observed different materials and have observed the change in length of different materials. Aluminum, steel, bronze, they all grow at a different rate. Okay? And the rate that they change at is called the thermal coefficient of expansion. And that is given by the letter alpha. Okay, so that is the uh, thermal co coefficient of expansion. Okay, and that is a value we look up in the back of the book. It's a look them up. So if you have your material table, you flip that open to the very back page. We're very familiar with this table, aren't we? And you just read across here. Let's see, where is it? Oh, it's the very last column. And it tells you the thermal coefficient of expansion, and it's a very small number. For instance, for aluminum, 2014 T6. Hey, that's one of the ones we're working on today. Alpha for aluminum, 2014 T6, is 12.8 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree F. Isn't that a weird uh, unit, per degree F? Well, we have a new equation for this delta here, and our equation is this, alpha L delta T, okay? So alpha is the thermal coefficient of, of uh, expansion. L is just the original length of the material. We could put L O for original length, right? And then delta T is the change in temperature. Now that's going to be in Fahrenheit or Celsius, whether you're talking about uh, SI units or um, uh, US customary units, okay? So if that's in, if that is in degrees Fahrenheit, and this guy over here is in per degree Fahrenheit, whoop, whoop, those units cancel out, and they're going to leave you with just a length, right? And that's what the delta is, it's a change in length, so that makes sense. So this is the new equation of the day, and I have taken the liberty, bam, to add it to our list of equations. It's getting kind of long of things that we need to know, isn't it? Okay. So for this little problem, we have two walls, wall here, wall there, and we've got this three-step bar in between, and it's made out of three different materials, aluminum, bronze, and stainless steel. <coughs> Excuse me, the diameters that's a, that's a symbol for diameter, are 12 inches here, 8 inches there, 4 inches there, and of course the lengths up here. So they want us to find the normal stress. Normal stress. What is normal stress? Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's sigma stress, isn't it? So that's a force over area, isn't it? So they want to find that for each segment of the bar. So what's the stress here? What's the stress there? What's the stress there? The temperature goes from 70 to 100, okay? So the temperature is going up. What happens if the temperature goes down? Well, instead of the bar getting longer, the bar gets shorter, right? If delta T is negative, then this becomes negative, and so your delta for the growth is negative, all right? So here's how you solve this problem, okay? Number one, let's, well, I got my book here, and then I can put this book down. Let's look up the bronze and the stainless, and then we'll have all of these alphas over here, won't we? Okay, BR for bronze and ST for stainless. Let's see what we got here. Bronze, where are you, bronze? There you are. Uh, 86,100 is what we're talking about here. And 86,100 is 9.60 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree Fahrenheit. And then stainless steel, 304 stainless. Where is 304 stainless? There he is. 9.60. It's the same, isn't it? 9.60 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree F. Okay? So, 
first thing we're going to do, this is kind of like the problem we did last time when we did the method of superposition. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take away this wall over here at D and pretend it's not there. Whoop! And we're going to let it grow, let it grow. No, sorry. Okay, we're going to let it grow without the wall there. Then we're going to put the wall back, and what's the wall going to do? It's going to push it back, right? Well, it's going to push it back with some reaction force over here, some reaction at point D, okay? So, and this guy over here, of course, I'll have a reaction at point A. So, let's do this. Let's take that wall away, and let's let that grow, and that grow, and that grow, and let's see how much it'll grow. So, we're going to take this equation here, and we're going to use find the delta for this one, the delta for that one, and the delta for that one. So, we're going to add them up, right? So, delta total is equal to, all right, here comes the first one, the aluminum, right? So, the aluminum is 12.8 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree F times delta T, which is 30 degrees F, okay, times L. And this, this needs to be in inches. This is a little bitty number here. We need to be in inches. Uh, how about 48 inches? And that will give us our delta in inches because that and that cancel out, don't they? Plus, okay, let's do the next one, the bronze. 9.60 times 10 to the minus 6 times same temperature change, okay? And then times its length, which is 72 inches, isn't it? Okay, and then one more, plus uh, 9.60 times 10 to the minus 6 times change of temperature, and then times its length of 36. Okay. All right, it's time to get our calculator out. Now, we could factor a 30 out, but uh, let's just do it. Here we go. Let's just do it. All right. So, point, one, two, three, four zeros, one, two, eight, times 30, times 40, 48 equals. All right, so over here, delta total is equal to this guy is 0 0.018432 inches plus next 0 0.1234596 um, times 30 times 72 equals this guy 0 0.020736 and the last guy over there 0 0.123450 and then a 96 times 30 times 36 that equals 0 0.010368 inches okay is that a lot? That's 18 thousandths of an inch, right? That's about two and a half human hairs thick, right? That's 20 thousandths. That's almost three human hairs. And that's about a human hair width, right? So not a lot of growth, but, you know, some. Okay, so that number over there, plus 0 0.020736 plus 0 0.018 four, three, two equals, all right, so delta total is equal to 0 0.049536 inches. Again, leave lots of decimals, and then uh, we'll round at the end, okay? So without the wall there, this whole thing doo -doo 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 -doo, is over here now, okay? So we've got to push it back. Now, what are we going to push it with? A reaction... Force. So now we're going to have an axial elongation, really an axial shortage, um, due to a force. Hmm, what equation would that be? Oh, that one right there, right? So delta total, okay, delta total, 0 0.049536, right? There's our total delta is equal to what? Well, 
PL over AE for section 1 plus PL over AE for section 2 plus PL over AE for section 3, right? So this, re and who's, what's P? P is this reaction force right here. Do you agree that whatever that reaction force is, that's the force in, in this member, in that, right? Cover it up, right? That, that's RD. Cover it up, that's RD. Cover it up, that's RD, right? And what else do we know? RD is going to be equal to RA, right? I know that. The reaction at D is going to be equal to the reaction at A because there are no other applied forces on this problem, right? All right, so all we need to do is these PL over AEs for each one of those. And so, you know, it's got to compress that much. And who's going to compress? Well, he's going to compress a little, he'll compress a little, and that one will compress a little, okay? So let's write our PL over AEs for all of these. Since RA equals RD, let's just call that F, okay? That's just the force, the reaction force. I'm just going to call it F, okay? So here we go. All right, I'm going to need my table one more time because I am going to need PL over AE. I need E, don't I? So I need E for each one of these materials. So E, aluminum, E, bronze, and E, steel. I need those, don't I? I need that. All right, modulus elasticity for 2014 T6, 10.6 times 10 to the 3, which is 10,000. 600 KSI. Bronze, bronze 86 100 is 15 times 10 to the 3 KSI. Okay, and then finally stainless steel 304 is 28 times 10 to the 3 KSI. Okay, so there's my values out of the book. I don't think I'll need the book anymore, but I will need my calculator again. All right, here we go. PL over AE for each one. Let's do a, we'll do aluminum, bronze, and the stainless. So for the aluminum, the force is F. The length is 48 over A. The diameter is 12 inches, so that's pi times 6 squared. Right, and this was in uh, inches. This is in inches squared. Uh, this is in inches over here, and then the uh, E is in what is E in? KSI. Okay, so that's going to be ten thousand six hundred KSI. So that tells me because KSI is kips per square inch, right? The square inches cancel out. The inches and the inches cancel out, and just leave me with kips, right? So. F, when I find F here, it's going to be in kips, isn't it? Okay, so plus, okay, here comes PL over AE for the bronze. Okay, and that would be F times 72 divided by pi times, what's the radius there? 4 squared times E for bronze, 15,000. Okay, plus one more. PL over AE for the stainless is going to be F times 36 divided by pi times 2 squared, because that's a 4-inch uh, radius, diameter rather, sorry, times 28,000, okay? So, let's do a little... Let's do a little calculating, okay? So this is uh, 0 0.049536 equals, all right, how much is this? 48, oh, on clear. Come on, calculator, wake up. All right, 48 divided by pi equals, um, yeah, divided by pi, divided by 6 squared equals divided by 10,600 is 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros and then a 439, 439F plus 72 
divided by pi equals divided by 4 squared equals divided by 15,000 equals 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then a 9, 5, 4, 9, 3. F. One more. 36 divided by pi equals divided by 4 equals divided by 28,000 equals. Okay, plus three zeros. One, two, three zeros. Uh, 102, 314. F, okay? So let's add all our Fs together. So that one plus 0 0.1234. 95493, 95493, plus 0 0.12344039 equals, okay? So that whole thing equals this, um, 0.049536, uh, oh no, is equal to 0 0.000, 000 Two three seven eight four six F. So F, and this is going to be in kips, right? Is equal to here we go point zero four nine five three six divided by answer equals two hundred and eight point three kips. Now you see why I carry so many decimals, because when we do that division, uh, they kind of matter, don't they? Okay. So there's the force, that reaction force. As that thing grew, it generated 208 kips, which is 1,000 pounds, right? A kilopound. So now we know how this, this thing uh, from the thermal grew and caused a force. So how are we going to, the original question was, what is the normal stress in each one? All right, so let's make us a little room here for our last little thing here. Okay, so here we go. Sigma for the aluminum, right? The aluminum is F 208.3 divided by the area, right, which is going to be pi times 6 squared. Okay, that's it. And, let's, and that's going to be kips per inch squared. So that's going to be KSI. So sigma aluminum is equal to 208 divided by pi equals divided by 6 squared equals 1.84. There's the normal stress in the aluminum. The normal stress in the bronze is going to be same over there, 208.3 kips. Because that force is the same in here and there and there. The force in those is the same. The area, not the same. Pi times half of that's 4. 4 squared equals, that's going to be in KSI, so 208.3 divided by pi equals divided by 16 equals 4.14. And we expect it to get a higher number, right? Because guess what? The force is the same, but the area is going down. This guy should be even higher. Okay, so the stress, the normal stress in the stainless steel is 208.3 kips divided by pi times 2 squared, right? So 208.3 divided by pi equals divided by 4 equals 16.58. Okay? So there you go. It's a statically indeterminate problem, right? We had to take the wall away, let it grow. We got this other equation here which helped us figure out what the force in each one of those members were. Um, used the wool to push it back into shape, right? That was our PL over AE. 
And then that allows us to find the force, which allowed us to find the normal stress in each one of those pieces. Easy? You can do it. All right, I'll see you on the next video, gang.